Hi everyone, hey, how's it going? Okay, so today I'm here to share essentially my journey with you. Everything I'm gonna tell you about today is coming from personal experience. It's not facts, but it's what I've experienced and it's my perspective, so it may be helpful. I've, I've seen a lot of you around, but for those of you who don't know, um, I'm a there and I've graduated from Warwick like six months ago. And you'll still see me around. I'm still doing a lot of stuff on campus, like giving this talk. But today I'll, I'll talk about what my, what my career's been like and what kind of stuff I've been up to. So I'll, let's, let's talk about that. I think that's much more interesting. Honestly, I started learning coding in Python in like high school. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. I'm not one of those like C++ geniuses like coding from nine years old. So this was like right after high school, uh, just some hackathon in Reading I was participating in, some of my friends. It didn't seem too big to me at that time. It was mostly just for fun. But this turned out to be much more. We, as a team, developed a very simple but very fun software um, in the hackathon. As you can see, it was using satellite imagery just from Google and using some computer vision I hacked up in like four hours with very little sleep. Uh, we helped a charity called eWater Pay, and they were very happy with it. And the company that was sponsoring us, that's sponsoring the hackathon that year, um, they spotted us. And that kind of spring, uh, started up my like, career journey just from then. It turned out to be much, a much bigger thing. They found us, they told us to essentially build out our algorithm for their company. And that's what we did for the next couple of months. And this led to a lot of amazing trips, and we ended up in the US presenting to the uh, stakeholders of the big company. It was an amazing journey, and the point I'm trying to get across is just getting involved with things like hackathons or competitions, uh, and just through networking, you can get much more done than if you're just at home coding all the time. This was just through like two years of experience. I was very new to all this. And the other thing is, it's not just projects, but this downright internship, and everything I talk about from here is basically building off of this. So internships are very important, and projects will show that you actually know what you're doing. So if you can, try to get these and show, and show them in your portfolio. After that, university started. Uh, some of you recognize that's uh, the Climate Hack Warwick A event, amazing stuff. Um, did it with society. And the other logo you won't be familiar with is because it's one of, it was a startup I tried to uh, build with a, my, a couple of my friends. It failed miserably, hence why it doesn't exist anymore. But again, I was out here doing things, trying to make the most of my experience and building somewhat useful things. If you still have some time with university, try to get involved in things as much as you can. What I found out after graduating and from others I've spoken out is one of the biggest regrets is not staying involved and getting, doing things while they can. Once you're in the world, and especially if it's all remote work, which a lot of it is, there's very little um, connection at some points. So I'm, I still have the uh, chance to do this because I'm working remotely. So I come, across, come uh, in my free time and still uh, maintain my network here. In the uh, year, summer after second year, uh, I got an internship at Twitter. I will tell you how I, actually, how I prepared for it and how I got that later. Uh, but it was, a, it was a fun time. That was my first time setting up the whole Twitter build. And they sent up some cool stuff. Uh, it was all remote. I never got to actually meet anyone from Twitter. I did, I think, uh, get the chance to be in a video call with Jack Dorsey at some point, um, which was fun. But yeah, it was good times. Uh, what I actually did at Twitter was I was on their media tech client. Essentially, if you've ever watched any video or image on Twitter, me and my team wrote some small, tiny bit of code that ran it in the back end. That was all going well until um, one day the client started looking something like that. Uh, this is like four weeks into my internship there. People, there were uh, internal emails going across. Um, someone broke the Twitter build, uh, videos weren't playing. I thought it was hilarious, like would be dumb enough to you know, break Twitter. A few, a few days later, I think uh, Stacktrace came, came back to like our team. Um, yeah, it was me. Uh, thankfully, I think it was like right before it went into production. They have a lot of checks in place, but this still broke for them for like a lot of employees, every alpha tester, uh, even like actual public like, uh, people, but like it was limited, thankfully. Um, almost made the news, um, would have been fun. It was going pretty well um, until uh, this happened, I guess. Twitter gave me a job even though I you know, broke Twitter. Um, I was supposed to come back, I was supposed to work there right now, uh, until this happened. And that's, uh, yeah, when he rescinded all the offers, um, started laying off people. Now, this happened about two months before I graduated. So I, um, I had like two months to essentially find a new job. 
uh, it was scary. Uh, there, was a, there was a hiring freeze at the time, if you remember. So I didn't really have um, that many choices. My LinkedIn was like outdated by three years. My CV was non-existent. So this is essentially where, it's, where it started for me, like my job search process again. Two months of essential, very hard grinding of all the research I could find. Lots of research and lots of findings. Uh, that's what I'm planning on sharing with you today. It was very scary, but I think it was worth it in the end. Uh, after that search process, this is what my uh, day looks like. So yeah, now, now I work at Yelp. And most of the days, um, it's very relaxed. Like I can take very important meetings like that. That's literally me today. Um, office is great. That was our party. Uh, that, that's a work day, by the way. That's like people are supposed to do work. Um, yeah, there's food and dancing. It was great. And uh, yeah, there's lots of coffee and free food. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, work culture is amazing. It's 35 hour work week and I'm here on a Wednesday on a work day, so it's good. So I think it worked out for me. Um, it took a lot of effort to actually get into the get to this position, and it, I think it was worth it. Ah, so everything's good. Um, Work-life balance is great. Now, uh, some of you won't be happy with that. Um, some of you actually like to get paid for my, uh, paid for your work. So do I. I'm kind of greedy. Um, so I, I get asked this a lot. So I'll, I'll I'll talk about it as well. But in terms of bananas, uh, because why not? Let's make it more confusing. Now, this is the scale I'll be using. It's a relative scale um, in, in terms of bananas. Now, I'll let you figure out how much one banana is worth. Uh, it's a lot, because inflation. This year, after, um, Twitter and my other offers were around that. So I was happy with that. Some of them, you will know that, that as well. After all the negotiations um, right now, um, Yelp is surprisingly good as well for a graduate. Well, I'll talk about how I got to that, how I managed to like, bring it up from what they tried to give me, and more. So what do you get out of this talk? I don't know exactly who's sitting in here uh, or who's watching, but I know there's at least some people like in their penultimate year or even final years. What I can share with you is what I, the pro exact process I took, the techniques I used, the resources I used. And these, I'm fairly sure, do work. Me and my friends have used them before. Uh, I know people working at Palantir, Amazon, QRT, some other places. Uh, very simple techniques, but I think are very effective. I graduated six months ago, so these should be very up to date. It's very predictable. It, it goes something like this from like everyone I talked to, interview I talked about. You apply to some jobs, lead code, a lot apparently. Interview, you get eventually rejected from all the places. Uh, they do take three months, they take a long time. And eventually you, you just take whatever, what the first one accepts you. Uh, that's how it goes for most people. I almost did as well. Uh, but thankfully I, I knew, I was a Twitter before, so I had, I wanted something comparable, so I, I had high, I set a very high standard for, standards for myself. Um, these are the standard steps, but there's a lot more to the, each of these steps I figured out in the last couple of months. And there's a way, there's a way you can maximize what you get out of the game. Let's talk how you would apply and how I did. These are all the search engines I could think of. These are the ones I use personally. Now, the application stage is very random. It's, it's very unpredictable. And it's pretty much the hardest to actually get across because you have no control over it. You just submit them and hope the, whichever computer is scanning your resume is feeling good and lets you in. You need to use all the sources. I messaged dozens of recruiters, even a couple of CEOs on LinkedIn. Some of them worked out. But you, know, you got to be proactive. Use all the sources you can. And another thing is um, the order you apply to them is very important, as I found out. You may want to apply it to the companies you want more first. Because uh, as I found out the hard way, if you somehow get an offer from some other company, uh, you're gonna have to figure out which, ones, which, one you, uh, which one you accept. Because you don't really want to decline an offer after you've already accepted it. Uh, but also don't make the mistake I did of uh, going for the biggest ones straight up. This year, my first interview was with Jane Street, who are known for notoriously hard interviews. And I failed it absolutely miserably. And I don't think they're ever gonna like, uh, like, take any applications for me again. Do your research. Uh, there's a lot of information uh, on the web. Uh, I did a lot of research on all the companies I was applying to. Uh, also, those two are not for the same uh, job, by the way. Do not apply for janitor role at Google. But you get the point. There's a lot of anonymous information. Use it. OK, so that's the unpredictable step. 
But everything from here on is something you can control and you need to control if you want to get the job you want. Now, uh, for the jobs I got, you may think I did like, you know, hundreds of lead code questions. Some people do, uh, it worked for them, but I didn't really want to. I don't like doing lead code that much. This is how I started. Instead of doing lead code, I looked it through the fundamentals. This was the book I used. You use anything, but make sure you know what you're doing. Even the algorithms module is good, honestly, if um, you figure out how everything works. Practice the fundamentals, get it down. Practice the patterns. Uh, that is all the questions I've done in my life. And 50 of them are easy ones just to make me feel good my, about myself. And the other thing I noticed were they're very similar. It's the same, like 20 patterns repeated in different formats. Uh, once I figured them out, I just did like a couple from each. And that's pretty much all you actually need. It's the, um, it's, it's the same questions, different formats. One of the steps that no one seems to do for some reason, but practicing interviewing was one of the key things I figured out. For this, uh, I use PRAMP. You may or may not know them, but everyone does a lot of technical prep, behavioral prep, but they never actually see an actual person in the whole practice process. Um, I use PRAMP. Essentially, they pair you up with some random person on the internet, totally free, and you interview each other. So you can like, you know, practice having a breakdown at home instead of the actual interview. So you're, you're ready when you're actually doing it. Uh, another secret tip, I guess, um, maybe unethical, but I realized people leak a lot of answers. I, I just Google like Bloomberg questions, like, and these are fairly accurate. I'd say 50% of the time, the questions they come up, they're somewhere on the internet. If you search well enough, you can probably be prepared. There's also the behavioral side. I won't talk too much about it because there's too much, too many, too much information about that on the internet anyway. But you'll see some very common questions. Um, the technique I came up with was essentially, I applied to a lot of companies uh, and I just collated the kind of questions they asked, compiled about two, 200 questions and just prepared for those. And once you're ready with those, uh, any question you, that comes up, you can just find a similar uh, one and answer that. There's also situational questions, the other type. These are the ones that kind of caught me off guard. Uh, they ask you very specific ones and you have to really think about your past and when you failed. I just recommend you know, coming up with some situations that if you've come up in the past, uh, come up in your past, specific uh, projects or instances. For me, it was something like um, these ones. And you know, think about the practice, it's just part of the preparation. Now, if you've got this far, um, done your research, practiced questions, you will know what they will ask you. You will know what kind of patterns you want to use to answer them. And you'll also have the practice of you know, actually practicing with the human. Uh, there are a couple of tips I have, but somewhat vague. Uh, so for the actual interview, try to simulate the environment you were actually practiced in. I made the mistake of, I think, interviewing with Amazon at like 8 a.m. Uh, it went terribly. I was way too tired, uh, especially because like, um, I was essentially doing day, uh, night shifts uh, those days. So it was uh, terrible. Interview at the same time you would normally practice. Do it at the same desk, same computer, everything. Uh, good hardware, webcam, mic. If you look blurry, you will not give a good impression. Pen and paper. Uh, best thing I could, I could do in an interview is actually like, think of it on the paper, draw it out and show it on the webcam. And keep notes. Uh, so all the notes I compiled while I was preparing, I kind of just kept them in a document. And I just printed it out, put it uh, above my monitor. So whenever, during the interview, I could just look up and you know, have my notes ready. And so if you've done interviewing well, um, you might get offers, hopefully you do. These are some like generic factors, but these may apply to you. For me personally, I, I considered these, for, for my particular offers, they were kind of balanced. So I, was, I looked at a couple of different metrics, particularly these. Um, so six bananas relative to the scale I mentioned before, 800 employees. And the last one, I don't hear uh, people speak of it, but it's uh, essentially how much revenue the company makes per person. It's a, good, it's a good measure of you know, how well they're doing, essentially. And also, uh, I didn't think I need to say this, but like, yeah. So these were my stats for this year. I was very picky. To be fair, I don't think the 35 are still waiting, so it's more like this. But lots of rejections, a lot of rejections. Uh, so these were some of my interviews. Um, half of them, I guess, were final stage. And these are the exact same techniques I used with them. I found some of them very hard, but it's also a numbers game, so apply a lot. Um, I applied to as many places as I could for the first stage, but I 
was very picky when I was actually considering all my offers. Now, if you've got offers, uh, hopefully multiple ones, you may want to negotiate. Uh, I'll tell you what I did. I don't actually know how to exactly negotiate, but this is what I personally did. And it somehow worked. Uh, just a note, big companies won't negotiate with you as grads. Uh, they just don't like, seem to because they have very fixed boundaries. In my case, let's have company A and company B. Uh, these are two offers I received. I told B that A was offering much better, so I was like, I like your work, but I'd be much more inclined to take your offer if you, you know, pay me more. So they did, they were like uh, eight within the day. And the main thing I wanna say is, if you're open with your communication with your, empl uh, like with your uh, employers, uh, they're much more receptive to what you say. So I, I, I was completely honest with them. I was like, I have another offer with a very short deadline. And they were, uh, they were okay with um, that. Now, I, I, was still, I still wasn't happy. I was like, maybe I can you know, get more out of them. So I went back to A and told them, Okay, I have, I have a lot more, um, B is offering a lot more, so you know, could you drive it up more? They weren't okay with it, unfortunately. A was a much bigger company, and like I said, they don't like negotiating. Uh, so instead of the one week deadline, they were like, okay, you can, you can have a month to think about it, uh, you know, see if you can come along. So you don't just negotiate money, you also negotiate deadlines. And like, I'm very grateful I did, because in that month that they gave me, um, I still hadn't decided, uh, Yelp came around. And they offered a much, much higher starting thing. Um, at this point, my decision was made. They uh, Yelp was doing much better, not just comp, but all the other benefits were much better. So just because I negotiated, uh, it turned out to be much better. And I sent thank you emails and all that. But yeah, it worked out well. I was honest, but I don't know if that's always the best case. What next? For me, I don't really know. I, I'll stick with Yelp for a while. Um, I have other plans as well. For me, I, I'm happy with where I'm at right now. I'm getting, what, 10 bananas a year. I can do other meaningful stuff. Yeah, for those who are listening, for those who may want to do something similar, I hope this helps. Yeah, I'm, I'm just starting, and like, if you do the similar things, it'll, it's just starting out for you as well. And uh, this is often where people say, feel free to contact me and just leave nothing. I put everything I can there. Uh, literally scan the QR code if you want to add me. Uh, if you have any questions or just want to connect, network, um, add me there. But that's about it, that's, that's my story uh, till today. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, I will take them now. Thank you.